around the mid 90s to late 90s, early 2000s, the hip hop culture was infatuated with mafia, mafia movies, mafia organizations, to the fact that I could say 50% had mob names. You had names like Daz Dillinger, Capone and Noriega. Our very own No Limit family had Mr. Marcello, the Gambino family. You could go on to Murder, Inc. with Irv Gotti, and the list go on and on. But in New Orleans, Louisiana, we had our own Italian, notorious mafia family, the Marcello's family. And the boss of the Marcellos family was notorious in his own right. Carlos Marcellos on this episode of Nola's Notorious. Marcello was brought to the United States in 1911 and his family settled in a plantation house near Metro in Jefferson Parish, a suburban New Orleans. Young Marcello turned to petty crime in the French quarters. He was later in prison for masterminding a crew of teenagers who carried out armed robberies in a small town surrounding New Orleans. This conviction was later overturned. However, the following year, he was convicted of assault and robbery and was sentenced to Louisiana State Penitentiary in West Feliciana Parish for nine years. He was released after five years. Marcello would go on to receive more charges, including another prison sentence for 23 pounds of marijuana. By the end of 1947, Marcello had taken control of Louisiana Illegal Gambling Network. He also joined forces with New York mob associate My Lansky in order to skim money from some of the important casinos in New Orleans area. Shortly after becoming associated with the Hortoid family through marriage, according to former members of the Chicago outfit, Marcello was assigned to a cut of the money skimmed from Las Vegas casinos. Y'all remember the movie Casino, right? Where Sam Rothstein was put in charge. So the mafia can skim millions off the top. Them old men that used to sit in the restaurant and collect the skim. Well, that's one of them was Carlos Marcellos. He was given the cut in exchange for providing muscle in Florida real estate deals. By this time, Marcello has been selected as the godfather of New Orleans Mafia by the family's capos and the National Crime Syndicate after the deportation of Silvestro Silver Dollar Corella to Sicily. He held this position for the next 30 years. In 1975 extortion trial, two witnesses described Marcello as the godfather of the New Orleans Crime Syndicate. Now I can go on and on about the millions the mafia brought in because they had a code that if you broke that code it was a meeting put in place and you was hit, killed, clipped. The term hitman came from the mafia. The Marcellos family, they owned and controlled a lot of politics, gambling, and street activity in New Orleans. I remember coming up, seeing the Marcello's liquor. As I was young, I didn't know what it was. It was on Washington Avenue, not too far from Xavier University. As I got older, I understood who owned it. As I got older, I ran into Italians that owned liquor stores in the French quarters that I would tell later in this episode. But that's not what this episode about. It's about the controversy and the conspiracy Carlos Marcello's name was put in of the murder of two famous people. Famous people that people loved that he was alleged to have something to do with their assassination. The first one, President Kennedy. Inside the world of Carlos Marcello, he was the godfather of New Orleans who died this month. But beyond that, some investigators believe he was behind the murder of John F. Kennedy. Nancy Glass with our report. We can't see who has been hit, if anybody's been hit, but apparently something is wrong here. Something is terribly wrong. On November 22, 1963, 
While almost every American was mourning the assassination of John F. Kennedy, some were celebrating. One was this man, the then Teamsters Union President Jimmy Hoffa, whose corrupt hold on the Teamsters had been challenged by both Jack and Bobby Kennedy. I can't remember what you talked about, and you can't remember what it, whether he was in the have done anything of any importance, Mr. Kennedy, and I can't recall it. Another was Santo Traficante, head of organized crime in Florida. And for Traficante's closest ally, it was a double celebration. Carlos Marcello, who controlled organized crime in New Orleans, was acquitted of perjury and conspiracy charges the same day. All three had good reason to hate the Kennedys, who had targeted them in their war on the mob. Marcello had once been deported by Bobby Kennedy in a move some described as a judicial kidnapping. It didn't stick. But none of this was ever proven. He also was accused of killing another big time figure. He was accused of allegedly organizing the assassination on Martin Luther King Jr. Thomas L. Jones writes that New Orleans mob boss Carlos Marcello was a frequent racist. He despised blacks and vehemently opposed the civil rights movement during the 1960s. He openly expressed his hatred of Dr. Martin Luther King and his white knight attorney general, Robert F. Kennedy. Known to be a supporter of the Ku Klux Klan, Carlos was a generous financial supporter of the anti-civil rights movement. In 1993, Lloyd Jowers, a former Memphis Tower owner, claimed that he participated in the conspiracy to kill Dr. King along with a legend mafia figure, Memphis police officers, and a man named Raul. In 1993, Lord Jawas went on primetime television show and stated that he hired the killer of Dr. King as a favor to New Orleans mob boss, Carlos Marcello. Now to be fair to the Marcello's family, none of this was proven. Matter of fact, the King family sued the government and won. So the government took responsibility for Martin Luther King Jr.'s death, not the Marcello family. Many people feel the government threw Carlos Marcello's name in there as a cover up, as a distraction, because many people feel the government had both John F. Kennedy and Martin Luther King Jr. assassinated. But the fact that Carlos Marcello's name was mentioned in these two big assassinations, the fact that people believe he had the means, the power, and the balls to carry out this makes him one of Nola's top notorious figures. In his dying days, he returned to his white marble, two-story mansion overlooking a golf course in Metairie. Here, he lived out his last years of his life, cared for by a group of nurses and watched over by his wife and family. Carlos Marcello died on March 2nd, 1993.